Hey folks, Johnny here and I'm joined by Ronnie. As you'll have seen over the last few weeks, we've been talking Dungeon Saga Origins and we've been asking for your questions. Lots of people very hyped, very excited about this and rightly so. So, we should crack right in. So first up, Ron Purvis has asked, uh, curious as to what changes there are, if any, as opposed to the original Dungeon Saga. This also ties in with Gareth's, uh, Gareth Humphrey's question. If I already own Dungeon Saga, what's in it for me? Okay, good question. Thanks, guys. So I think the important thing here is what, what we've done is we've streamlined the boring bits and kept all the things that made Dungeon Saga fantastic. And what we've created is a whole new story arc. And so if you loved the original, you're going to doubly love this because the fiddly bits of setting up are now much easier. But the gameplay, the excitement, the drama, the story, the narrative, that's all there in spades. In fact, way better than the first time, I think, because we've learned how to tell stories better. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think you've got everything you had in the first, a whole new story arc, 100 hours of gameplay, uh, and a nice story that builds, starts with the undead, of course it does, uh, but it goes on to goblins, it goes on to abyssal dwarves, it goes on to, you know, Twilight Kid. So you've got that whole story arc, and we've set it as a prequel. So it doesn't in any way, um, it's not diminutive to the original, here you are, go and play the game again, go and enjoy the game, go and enjoy the story arc, and away you go and enjoy the experience of Dungeon Saga all over again. Definitely, yeah, that ties in nicely with the, the next question. Christopher Goff is, uh, is this a one-off or is it a whole new product line? Right, and, and, and another good question, and I think this is, it's a totally new product line in as much as we did not feel comfortable telling people to go out and buy Dungeon Saga, the Dwarf King's Quest anymore. Because while the, we're all a bit frustrated with bending miniatures nine years ago, these days it's just not acceptable. I mean, we're having orders coming in from you know France and Germany and the UK that wanted us to reprint it. And the kind of week each year went, well, let's just reprint, we've got other things. We actually said, no, we can do better plastics, yeah. we can do better games, we can do better setup, we can do this much better. And so this is very much the starting point of the whole new Dungeon Saga. Yeah. All we're trying to do is take the beautiful diamond that was Dungeon Saga 1, flawed as it was, and it was a rough diamond. This one, we're now able to polish the diamond so it's perfect, and then build forward from it. Yeah. So everything that you had with Dungeon Saga is still valid. That journey that you and your mates did is still part of the journey, and we're, we're honouring that by not rewriting it, mm. by not going there, but by starting with your same heroes, so those that have never done it can experience it all the way through. Those that have, here's a, a Rogue One, you know, here's Andor, like a prequel that hooks into that thing that we love. But boy, oh boy, our budget's better. Our engineering's better. Everything's better. Yep. So it's going to be a, a really super cool. And then we'll come back later and start doing the super deep character development, more adventures and more stories, but now built with beautiful plastics more streamlined setup and, and ad minimum game mechanics. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, again, uh, ties in nicely to the next follow-on question is, uh, Arthur van der Steer said, the one thing that put him off the first edition was the bendy miniatures. Have these been upgraded? 100%. Yep. And I think if you want to go back and play Dungeon Saga and you bought the Legendary Edition, all the minis, you can go and sub in because every adventure has to start playing undead. Because um, why wouldn't it? But... This journey is the miniatures are now the engineering, everything, the way we've sculpted. Go look at Hellboy, go look at The Walking Dead. Beautiful, fantastic sculpts, one piece, but paintable, playable. Yes, yes, yes. Everything about this game is is 10 years better than it was. Yeah, it's just gone on leaps and bounds, hasn't it? Yeah. From all that we've learned with Star Saga, with so yeah. on. So forth. See, seeing the miniatures in the. Uh... In the office, they're just absolutely stunning, aren't they? So, you will, and you'll be all seeing them. We're not sharing them too much today. We're answering the questions. It's a bit of a dry Q and A because I think we've got three or four weeks now coming up of just fantastic, pretty beautiful content. Yep. But I think we owe it to everybody that had backed or bought Dungeon Saga, the first one, to answer these questions, and that's what we're trying to do. So absolutely, yeah. Not we're not going to be too pretty today, but keep watching <laughs> this space. It's going to get very, very good. The, the Legend Edition is going to be unbelievably good value i will say that it's going to be less than half price of what it would be at retail yep. we just need help of course this is the retail edition that'll be 50 quid um 60 quid um we can of course release that but hey we want to run the campaign we also want to not just release that we want 
the Goblin expansion, the Twilight King expansion, the uh, but. Uh, Bissell Dwarf expansion, yeah. plus big monsters, plus some stretch goals, plus some extra heroes. Um, so if you're in any way doubting, just pick it up, because I think you, your future self will thank your past self for making <laughs> a very wise decision. Um, Adam Edgar has asked, is this the one Ronnie was said was great family game slash kid friendly? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, this is it. This is this is, and it's a great starting point. That's kind of why we prequeled rather than sequeled yep. because we wanted to go back and say, if you're just starting, start here. Mm -hmm. We want it to be the monopoly of, um, well, not monopoly because it's a rubbish game, but you know what I mean. <laughs> we want it to be the uh, starting point of your dungeon thing um, journeys. This is where you first get a hold of your niece, nephews, kids, partners, better halves game club that's just started doing board games and wanted to go into first dungeon crawler this is the one yeah it's got the mechanics it's got the joy we streamlined the setup and the bits that you know when i played with my kids they were bored waiting for me to set up dungeon saga i'd kind of lost them by the time i'd even got halfway through setup yeah and that's the, the big change in that respect is is the setup time is just correct boom, there you go it's, it's straight off up. you go all like the tactics are still there and i think we've yeah. seen some about that oh, you still got back ranks yet yeah, yes don't get attacked in the rear it's going to hurt more and um, it's all there but the the streamlining of the of the of the gaming process to get it onto the gaming table quicker to think you know what it's tuesday night let's play that so yeah this is it this is your getting started but there's 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 a hundred hours of gameplay in here, yep. so plenty, plenty, plenty of um, you know if you work it out, price per hour, it's going to be cheaper than a coffee. <laughs> um, and Steve Hildrew, I don't know who he is, no, nope, has asked uh, how young do you think the kids need to be to enjoy this game? So I think we've said ten plus, haven't we? Yeah, and I think if you're prepared to do a bit of the if you if you're enjoying time with the kids, uh, rolling dice gets fun from, you know, uh, seven, eight, nine, and yeah. ten, but they won't quite get all of the admin. Every kid's different, but I think it's family time. There is nothing in here that, that, that can't be good fun. Yeah. And, and, and on that note and talking of kids, this is going to be under everyone's Christmas tree, isn't it? That is the plan. Yeah, absolutely. We are going to, we've got the tools literally all sculpted, ready to go. We've got everything edited, all the missions written, the whole thing's done. Um, we're going to take quite a grown-up approach to the whole Kickstarter. Uh, there's going to be one stretch goal, which we'll talk about separately. Otherwise, it's just going to be daily unlocks. You're all going to get everything we can do. We know what we want to do with it. We've got the legendary box. It looks gorgeous. We want you to have it all. We want to say thank you. Please, we just need a print run and help with the tooling, which our, our, our goal will allow us to do. Um, so if you, you jump on board every day, Maybe at the weekends there'll just be one because weekends are slow, but each day there'll be a daily unlock, just depending on exactly what it needs to be. And um, we're going to literally, the day we've got printing, we're going to press the button on the tooling uh, and away we go and, and off we go. It's just the, um, the rest of the tool. So uh, and in October, shipping out November under Christmas trees in December. So Christmas present, so you can put it under the Christmas budget and say for the first time to the uh, the boss, I've sorted Christmas sorted out this in year. March. I've sorted yep. it in March rather than, you know, December 24th. And all normal people do our Christmas shopping. So. <laughs> Um, and then we have Kevin Chenard and Trudgeon Pilgrim both asked about uh, translations, French, German, etc. Yeah. So I think I just mentioned, actually, we're going to have a, a threshold for doing the edition in the language. We can track it all now. I think somewhere 500 or 750 copies when we've got that many backers, that will trigger it off in that language. Yeah. Um, super easy it's just there it's gonna be a counter so please if you're watching we've still got four or five weeks we think three four or five weeks before we go live so do start sharing do start building that audience up if you get the numbers we will do it and we'll also be working with our uh, distribution partners we know that that's going to go into france spain and germany it's the extra that we want to get translated and give to you guys but they may well buy some of those legendary editions too and that they will count so if we go for 750 and they buy 250, we just need 500 French backers, Spanish backers, German backers. Uh, we've got the infrastructure. We've done Kings of War now, Armada in French, German, yeah. Spanish. Um, so, yes, please do jump on board. And then I think the one stretch goal, which we've just not defined the exact number, will be about the solo play and mm -hmm. the co-op. 
play, uh, which is the AI. You're taking the 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 uh, overlord, which actually is kind of one of the fun roles and the way you can GM it all. Um, but we're going to make that. So if you want to play solo, that is a stretch goal. That will be something we'll have to build. It's not in the legendary pack, and that will be one, maybe one or maybe one of two stretch goals. And whatever the level is once we've been able to do our print runs. Yeah, that's that's one of the questions quite a few people have, uh, have asked is, will it be solo, will it be co-op? And yeah. So if if there is the uh, the call for it out there, then we, then we will build it. Yeah, it'll be there. Just, just join on and get it. And it's one of those things. We want to do it properly. I think yep. in previous campaigns, we said yes to everything. And that sometimes means that some of the things were not to the standard that we wanted. And also the timings, you know, we're rushing it. Um, you know, we've done 22 Kickstarters now, and I'd like to think between Hellboy and, and some of the later ones, we've got quite a lot of them right. But this was one of the early big ones. It was a, a big one for us. And we just got a little bit caught out, and this time we're going to make sure it's crystal clear. This is when we translate. This is when we do solo play. And otherwise, you're going to get everything that's in that box. Well, not that box. Not that box. The big box. That box. Yeah. Yeah, just big, beautiful box of joy. Yeah, so... Um... Sam Lofty had asked, uh, will it eventually go to retailers or Kickstarter? Is it just Kickstarter? That explains that, doesn't it? That yeah, that's the retail all. version. Yep. That's going to be you know, 50, 60 quid, 50, 60, 70 dollars. That's the retail version. That's what people want to get started with. And then they add the expansions on, which we can go through. They'll take a year, two years, three years to get through those. You can't really sell 200 pound boxes at retail. And that's what it needs to be if it goes through all of the distribution. Um, but because this is going from us directly to you, all we need is a print run and help with the tooling. And, that, and that's worth mentioning when you say 200 pound, that's that's of, of stuff that you will get in this uh, legendary edition, but it won't be that, will it? Oh, no, no, less than half uh, price. Yeah. It's going to be under 100 quid, absolutely so, certain. We're just finalizing the tax into Europe and some of those things, and it's just finalizing those things. But this is going to be yeah, um, a no-brainer price. A ludicrous price for an awful lot. 100 just, minis, I think, yep. you know, 80, 90, 100 yep. minis, hours and hours of gameplay, 100 hours of gameplay, 100, whichever way you go to, um, you know, a pound a mini, a pound an hour. Yeah. Wow. Um, Sam, Lofty also asked, Sam Lofty also asked, will the miniatures be one piece? Yes. Yeah. And that's simply to get them I think it's to get them on the gaming table as quick as possible. Yep. We did look at, should we do them in kind of push fit hard plastic? But it, quadruples the time from opening box to gameplay yeah. and if you look at our hellboy miniatures uh, they're beautiful board game pieces and that's something that these are still miniatures they're yeah. absolutely miniatures when you see the barbarian with his axe and the dwarf standing there they're just they've got character yeah. they've got swagger and you know that you know when you open the monopoly set i want to be the top hat i want to be the boat i want to be the boot doesn't mean anything and um, we've tried to capture we know that that's an urge i want to play the barbarian but now not only have you got a beautiful, fantastic miniature, he plays like a barbarian. His feats are barbarian-type feats, chopping yep. everybody up. <laughs> um, the dwarf can be dwarven. So you really get a, a bond with your character, which we have in Monopoly. You're going to have times 10 when you play through this, and, and everyone did the first time you played it. Excellent, yeah. Um, yeah, we've already touched on on solo play, so Mark, that's, uh, that's your Sorry, I jumped ahead on that one. Uh, no, it's all right. I, I didn't so. know. Sorry, Mark. <laughs> so, so excited to, uh, to tell you all about uh, what we've got coming. Yeah. Um, and then uh, someone's also asked, will the uh, miniatures be available separately, or is this just Kickstarter? And I guess that leads on to the sort of the FOMO of, of the Kickstarter is that there's never going to be a better time to jump on this. Yeah, there? just don't. I mean, will they be? Yes, they'll be £25 or £20, whatever they are in our Dungeon Adventure sets, and you'll be able to add them a year, two years from now, whenever they come out. Um, much like we did the Green Range figures. But, uh, you know, you're going to get the 100 figures and you'll be paying 20 quid for 10. Of 20. So um, you'll be paying 200 quid for the figures. So they will be available if you want to upgrade them. Of course, they're there. And if you want to wait, no problem. But I wouldn't. I think you'd be crazy because I think the minis are beautiful. It's going to be turned around super quick. You've got 100 hours of gameplay. You've got the Kickstarter exclusives. You're going to have all the unlocks. Um, it's going to be packaged together. I think one of the things that Matt and the guys do really well now, it, everything's in a tray. You know, if you think about the Walking Dead stuff, mm -hmm. if you think about the Hellboy stuff, it's in a tray with a top and it covers and it comes out. And it's kind of sits on your Kallax and it's a... Uh, it's something beautiful, yep. you know, and we talked about doing the bookcases again and actually, you know what, the compromises in the short term for this product 
versus the joy of just that tray and tray, mm. the Hellboy box set. Um, uh, that, that, that's why we're going down that route. Isn't it? It's come of... out, you paint it, you put it all away again. There'll be little sections for everything to go in. So it's just replayability, and I think that's what is one of the critical things. Absolutely, this. yeah. I know a lot of a uh, lot of my friends when it comes to, to board games, they, they've been able to put the miniatures in the trays and have a section for each individual counters that you've all punched out and stuff. That in itself is is an enjoyment. Part of the joy, of the tray the game, just comes it? out and it's all there and nice and tidy. And yep. the, the, you know, this is something you're going to play and play and play. And it's going to be like a you know TV series and away you go um the nice thing is the the adventure builds up so you start with the undead because everyone has to and we wanted that in the in the retail version you go on to goblins and that is the second adventure you do go so then you can play third and fourth in whichever order you want you can either go abyssals or you can go twilight kins which is your own choice and then you play those and then there's some end boss baddies that start appearing later on that they come out later and some of those have some goblins in them and so on and so forth and dead. So as it builds, it builds out a story, but there's choices about which way you play it um, before before going on to the final bit. So that story, that narrative that we think was really what paid Dungeon the Saga, a bit of Dungeon Saga, so good. So that's still... Yeah, very, very exciting. It is. We really are pumped to get this going and, um, yeah, start it again, start it properly. <laughs> Excellent. We'll have plenty more Q&As between now and launch because I'm sure there's lots more questions as everyone's getting really excited about this new launch. Yeah, and I think you know, we'll get the, the, the Matt in to talk about rules and show yep. off what's gone on, what we've streamlined. I mean, it's mostly admin. It's mostly the setup. Um, we found cleverer ways of doing the same thing after 10 years of game building. So um, all there, lots, lots more to come. Um, you know, like I said, we've, we've not shown you too many pretties because we're going to keep revealing those over the next coming weeks. So keep watching, everyone. That's Ronnie saying he's not going to give spoilers. It's uh, <laughs> quite a change. I'm going to be online sure, for the next few weeks. Sure, we've had plenty already. <laughs> um, that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again shortly. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.